two, three. Hello, fight fans. I am Jason Burgos here to co-host a new edition of Back Talk, and this time around, I am joined by a co-host that is a widely popular, popular star of mature film, webcam icon, social media influencer, <laughs> podcaster, and of course, a big fan of the sport of mixed martial arts. And that is the one and only Kendra Lust, Madam Lust. Thank you for joining me to co-pilot this podcast tonight. Well, thank you for having me. Super <laughs> excited to be here. Uh, wish I was actually where you're at. You're in New York, right? Yes, I am. Would be much more exciting than being here. But <laughs> that's okay. Thanks for having me. And my pleasure. Now, I have so many questions, so many things that to ask you about and talk about. Now, I, I recently watched your interview with James Lynch, and you talked about getting into MMA about, you know, three years ago or so, and actually doing MMA, MMA related workouts. Um, talk to me about, like, the, the training you've done, because I've seen you pop up on several fighters' social media over the last couple of years, training with them and stuff like that. Like, are you actually actively training, say, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, maybe Muay Thai, kickboxing, you know, something else? Are you, you know, doing like real, real in-depth MMA related things as just workouts for your phone, for your free time? Yeah. You know, so um, I, I like to work out. Lately, I've been kind of in a slump with this quarantine. Um, mm. It's been a little bit crazy. I know a lot of the um, gyms are not open, but I'm trying to yeah. make use of some of the things that I have at home. Um, definitely looking to get back, you know, into a regular routine of doing a little bit of Muay Thai and some Jiu Jitsu. Um, the coach I was training with, I'm like, okay, I think, you know, we're going to take a little bit of a break because of the pandemic, but um, I'm missing it. It's a great workout. I love mm -hmm. it. So um, I told her, I'm like, okay, I need to get back at this. So <laughs> it, it will be starting up soon within the next <laughs> week or so. I'm, I'm kind of going stir crazy. Is there an aspect of it that you really enjoy compared to, say, other workouts you've done in the past? I know you're, you know, what I read, you're big into fitness before. So, like I saw in the interview, you mentioned, like, it works out the muscles that you didn't even know you have. Is that what it is? Or really, you know, those kind of things? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's kind of like bittersweet, you know, when mm. I'm when I'm doing it, I'm just like, holy cow, this is kicking my ass, especially <laughs> when you know, you're doing because I like striking. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. It's just I think it yeah. takes out some aggression. And, you know, and then when you see, um, you know, when you tweak one little thing, and you see that your kick is a little bit more powerful. And I like, yeah. again, I have a long way to go. But it, it's fun for me. So I but those kicks, people do not understand, you know, your lower body <laughs> when you're working that out. Yes. It, is, it is intense. It's so much yes. more difficult than just, you know, upper body stuff. So, um, you know, I like I like a little bit of both. I like rolling around on the ground, obviously. But um, <laughs> it's kind of fun in that sense, too. So. Would you say, like, you're a fan of, like, overall MMA? Because I know you're friends with folks like Juan Archuleta and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, are you watching Bellator? Are you watching PFL uh -huh. One Championship? Or are you mostly, because you're still relatively new to it, mostly just UFC kind of content? Oh, no. I caught Bellator fights on Friday, and then oh, I right. absolutely, and if I don't, I'm not able to catch them. I, you know, I stream them, or I'll okay. catch up, you know, I'll try to catch up that catch up that way but um i'm watching both you know i i don't have a preference ufc versus bellator i think if you know they're a good fighter and um they're in, entertaining to watch i mm. i enjoy it you know and it's cool to you know watch the prelims as well just because you kind of get an idea like the new up-and-comers and um it's exciting so i caught both uh fights friday and saturday and wow I, it was, it was, <laughs> all, I enjoyed uh, both Bellator and UFC. It was, it, they were both the great cards. And you know, you make me feel bad a little bit because you were saying, you know, you're still getting used to it. I don't even watch all the prelims. I can't even see all the prelims. So the fact yeah. that you're watching prelims, that's outstanding. That's a deep dedication to the sport. So I respect that. But, um, you know, going back to like that talk you had with James, you talked about like some of your favorite fighters being strong female fighters. Also, mm -hmm. people you know, like Juan, uh, your Beauty and the Beast co-host, Julian Marquez. Yeah. But there are some fighters... People can't stand. Like, I know I've had a few before. I try to be unbiased now as a journalist, but are there fighters out there you just want to see get beat up? Like, is Colby Covington someone you, you want to see get beat up? Maybe John Jones, Sean O'Malley. Are there some fighters that you really just can't stand? You know, for a while, I wasn't the biggest John Jones fan. I, I yep, just, lot, I yeah. don't know why. It just, something about him, and I, I just, I, and not because, he, I mean, he pound for pound like he is 
the greatest light heavyweight like ever. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel, I just wanted someone to beat him. So, um, (laughs) I just did. I just got so tired of his long legs. It's like, he has an advantage. (laughs) Nobody can get inside. He just wears the legs No one kicks those legs either. I, right. So, Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted him to, to lose. And then after, you know, kind of becoming more of a, you know, learning more about the sport and becoming a little bit more educated about it, I have developed more of a respect for him. And then, you know, he took, he has taken some time away and has done some things in the mm. community. Yeah. So I was like, you know, gosh, like, uh, you know, I, I do. But for a while, I want him to lose. So I, I take that back. <laughs> However, mm-hmm. I wanted this fighter to lose and he did and Mm -hmm. i i don't know i just feel sean sugar or yes sugar o'malley like he he, the way he he talked so much crap i guess and then he went out (laughs) in a stretcher so for me Mm -hmm. i was glad he lost i thought he got too cocky too quick and Mm -hmm. uh he says humble but is he really i don't know yeah sugar show i should have said yeah (laughs) so we'll see so i'm kind of I don't want to say I'm glad he lost, but I'm kind of glad he lost. <laughs> I am. A lot of people are with you and, and, and that feeling for sure. But so I, I like I mentioned, you have the podcast with Julian of Beauty and, and the Beast podcast, who I interviewed last week and asked him mm-hmm. about it as well. Yeah. The show is doing great, putting up big numbers already. Talk to me about how the like the show came together from your point of view. Also, what do you love about doing it and feel it kind of offers the viewer? Because you two talk about all kinds of topics on the show. Yes, you know, and, and we do. And we realize like the first 10, 20 episodes are just going to be us kind of getting comfortable with each other and mm-hmm. us going back and forth. However, we really have um, talked about uh, recently, the last couple of weeks, just narrowing down, you know, what the show is going to highlight. And, mm-hmm. you know, a bit of it is going to be obviously it's it's going to focus on sex and sports because okay. sports is kind of his forte, you know, obviously. And then you know, me coming from the adult industry, just, you know, having some knowledge about um, <laughs> sex, sex education. Bit, yeah. And um, so kind of coming together with a little bit of that. So that's kind of, and I have my little script here, of like our show, we're going to be doing nice. I do the script too. So, I respect that. So yeah, so, um, you know, highlighting um, women and, you know, female empowerment and, um, you know, just kind of getting his view because he's, I believe, in his late twenties, and you know, I'm forty, so a different perspective, both male and female, and um, he can talk about the dating world, whereas you know, I've kind of been there, done that, so it's <laughs> kind of fun, you know. Mm. So that's where we're at. But we we met a couple of years ago in Vegas, and you know, at that time he wasn't even fighting. And when uh, we decided to do this, I thought, you know, I want to do a podcast. I'm I, I'm not comfortable like doing it by myself so I want to co-host so we were just kind of chatting and I thought I was like he's kind of fun you know so maybe I'll ask him and I had no um motive like I didn't know he was ever gonna fight again like I didn't know a ton about him I just knew that he did and if he fought again great if he didn't that's his choice but he was a cool person so my motive wasn't just because you know he was in UFC I just thought he could lead like give me some insight so so it kind of worked out and now you know obviously he's back and uh everything kind of revolves around his training camp with the podcast so yeah yeah, so it's cool and I like it. It's a it's a good balance, different perspectives and, and topics mm-hmm. that a lot of people can understand and relate to. Now, I, I read you got your bachelor's in nursing, and you yes. were a registered nurse for several years before you went into doing webcams and film and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I love that story of transition, mm-hmm. but I am also curious on what like did your friends and family think of that mm-hmm. transition? Because it's not like you did adult mm-hmm. films like right out of high school. You did yeah. all the things like loved ones would be proud of. You went to college, right. you did, you got the degree. Like were they supportive on some level doing the webcam stuff, the adult films, because it was a choice to improve your way of living? Or is it still, it took a long time for them to come around on the whole idea? Yeah, that's a good question, you know, because it's not like your typical conventional type yeah. of career it's not like yeah. people say i'm gonna grow up and you know i want to get porn <laughs> you know i mean and that, it's okay you know um and it's you know it's not uh, a traditional type of career so 
So obviously when I started people, I think they were shocked a little bit. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, I had some family members, not immediate, but extended that were like, oh my gosh, you know, or whatever. And, and that's fine. I, I always say what people think of me is, is none of my business because at the end of the day, I don't have anything to prove to anyone else other than my immediate family. So uh, Mm -hmm. my immediate family was supportive and, um, you know, ultimately what somebody does does not define who they are. And um, I'm not ashamed of, of my sexuality or being empowered or feeling, it makes me feel empowered. And I feel like people, especially women, it's a double standard. And I'm, I'm completely yeah. against that double standard when it, when it comes to that. So for me, I'm not ashamed. And I think we should be proud. We should be sex positive. We should support people and whatever it is that they want to do, as long as they're not harming children, animals, or the elderly, like simple mm-hmm. as that. So, um, yeah, but it was, it was a little nerve wracking you know, yeah. at first. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm glad you brought up uh, the, like the double standard because that's kind of, kind of the, uh, sort of the direction I was going because female fighters in MMA are starting to make more money and do better than say their contemporaries in other combat sports like kickboxing and boxing and stuff mm-hmm. like that. However, there's still a huge disparity, be- disparity between men and women's pay in MMA. Now, adult films, I would imagine similar to MMA and like the the fan base is very male leaning. However, yes. more so than MMA, I would think the women in adult films are truly the money makers because that's what people want to see. So, you know, educate me. Do do the does that mean the women in adult films make more than the men, or even in that industry there is still that shameful disparity between genders? You know, and I'm no one's ever brought it up to me like that. You know, comparing uh, MMA to the adult industry. However, you are absolutely correct. Women, um, you know, and it is kind of sad because I've heard directors say, you know, at the end of the day to the guys, like you're just a piece of equipment, essentially. <laughs> you're a prop. And, you know, we couldn't do what we do without them. True. So uh, my perspective was never that I'm more important than my male talent. I've never taken on that ideology just because I – regard everybody on set just as important because Mm -hmm. if you know the lighting guy or the the sound guy or director like you know if your male talent's having a bad day let me let me tell you you're going to be on set a long time you know (laughs) so you want to make sure your director producer is happy and that your male talent's on point um because it could really ruin your day so i i but there is a huge huge pay um difference between male and female performers all right, I like that. I'm, I'm, I'm for that. I think it's more than fair. It's, it's, it's about time. It needs to be like that in other places. Now, when, when uh, adult films are, you know, adult films are, are still kind of taboo in certain ways, at least here in the U.S., yeah. I feel like, like the industry it is, you know, maybe far more mainstream than it was 15 or 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And, and somewhere like yourself can have a huge influence on social media and stuff like that. But are mm-hmm. there, like, veterans or, like, retired actors from the industry who have said things, like, begrudgingly to you, like... You you know what? Well, in my day, back in the 90s, we were just called porn stars and religious types. They came after yeah. us. You kids today have it easy. Like, did you get yeah. stuff like that and, and kind of happy you started like in the, the 2020s and, and this era, not in the 90s and stuff like that? Yeah, that's a good question because, you know, a lot of, a lot of, I believe that there is a lot, I wouldn't say a lot of animosity um, because I think a lot of the performers uh, that back in the 90s, they were they were the ones that paved the way. So I, I think it's important to understand where the industry and how it has evolved, you know, mm. so you can really appreciate the benefits of social media and the mm. autonomy that we have and control yeah. over our brand and our career because they didn't have that back then. So I think it's important to respect that, you know, respect your craft then and now and and to pay homage and uh to not forget you know the jenna jamesons the julia ann's the kylie ireland's the amber lynn's like all of those ginger lynn's all of those women and men uh evan stone and uh peter north you know so you you have to understand where how where it started to appreciate kind of what you have and where you are now so absolutely it's totally different though even though we you know we're supposed to be 
like the secular culture in the U.S. Religion still has a huge influence on society. And I'm curious, like, if you ever had like a personal clash in terms of religion and being in adult films, because many of us, you know, you're just indoctrinated into a religion from like a kid, and you're that's just kind of yes. what you're told to do. You get into it, and that's you know, for me, it was with Catholicism. Was it the same for mm-hmm. you? And once you got older, eventually moved into adult fare, was there like a schism in your brain and what seems like warring concepts or? Are you of the mindset you can be very much an adult film star and still be religious or at least have friends in the industry that feel that way? Yeah, I think religion is um, personal to each person. And religion is, you know, organized by man. Spirituality is something individual. And I think everybody either has their own, um, I guess, feelings. um, and And I think it's relative to your situation and how you were raised. For me personally, I went to catechism, you know, I made my communion, my confirmation, yep. my confession, you know, and and I don't necessarily agree with Catholicism. I don't want to talk religion too much. I, I think <laughs> everyone should believe in whatever it is that they yeah, want to believe. And we all have to believe in something, you know, I mean, if not, like, yeah. what is our purpose? However, I think we're all sinning all the time you know yeah. if we're thinking about something we're, we're lusting if we're eating too much you know it's gluttony so we're all committing these sins however i think you know follow the ten commandments i really just be a good human mm-hmm. do the right thing be kind you know help your fellow brother sister friend that type of thing and at the end of the day i i really believe that you know god or the higher power will say hey you know this person is has been a good human and mm-hmm. because I do this, you know, I'm doing it. I'm getting paid. Everybody else is doing it for free and hiding it. You know, they're little skeletons <laughs> in the closet. Let's be real. You know, yeah. they're doing it maybe mm-hmm. for an Applebee's dinner. God, help you all. <laughs> you know, okay? And a movie. And mm-hmm. I'm at least having fun with it. And, yeah. you know, I'm owning it. So, but yeah, I think it is, the struggle is, is real for a lot of people, you know. And I, and I agree a thousand percent. I'm like I'm a person that feels like if you got faith, you have a believe in a faith kind of thing. I'm cool with that. Yeah. Follow those kind of just tr- like you just yeah. said, like the the tenets of just being a good human being. You know, organized religion. You know, it could be dangerous, but. I'm, I'm moving from kind of like that religion to something that's like sort of a religion in itself, which is sports. Sports is almost a lot of, of religion mm-hmm. for a lot of people. Uh, aside from it, man, I know you're supposed to be a, a big sports fan too. Like what are some of the other big sports? Like who are your teams in other sports, favorite mm-hmm. athletes? What other things do you follow in there? Oh my gosh. So I'm a huge basketball plant or basketball fan. I've played, oh my gosh, I remember dribbling around chairs. My dad had me doing it <laughs> after first grade, like first mm. and second grade, he coached a boys team. So I was a tomboy, so I'd go to all the practices and, you know, I played rec league and stuff like that. I played high school a little bit in college. So always basketball. Like that for me is just I have this special love for, for basketball. Um, I love football. Obviously mm-hmm. never played that. But it is it is a <laughs> brutal sport. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. Uh, I just I love it. Um, I'd like to start learning more about soccer or football, as they call mm-hmm. the real in the real sense. It's um, just an incredibly popular, intense, I mean, so much athleticism. So uh, those are the, the main sports that I, that I really like. All right, so that's pretty much all the questions in terms I had for you, for you and, and learning about you. So let's like transition now to just MMA questions. And I, I'm glad you yeah. to know you watched both shows this weekend, so you're going to be great with the, a lot of these questions now. <laughs> the, the first question I have comes, and you're going to love some of these names. These names from that come from the Sure Dog forums are always they're just beautiful stuff. I now, love it. This first one comes from Substance Abuse. They ask, okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, D- they ask, Dana White shut down UFC versus Bellator fights. Like they asked him in the post fight after UFC Vegas, oh, what do you think about, you know, uh, mm-hmm. super fights between the brands and stuff yeah. like that? He, he was not for it. They say, mm-hmm. why would he bring attention to a secondary organization? And could Michael Chandler and Patricio Pitbull hang in the UFC? Like, how how much do you know about Chandler and Pitbull? And if you, you follow them, like you say you watch Bellator, what do you think? Do you think they could, could do very well in, in the UFC if they were in there? I, I don't know enough about Chandler, but Pitbull absolutely could be in the UFC. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I heard Dana White say, you know, um, he made a negative comment about Scott Coker about – you know, about his, I think he said he had the best light heavyweight um, yeah. division. And, yep. you know, a but I mean, comment. I, yeah, I mean, I get it because you, everyone, and he said that everybody that has left UFC has gone to Bellator. 
But Dana White didn't touch on the fact that you don't know why they left. Was it money? Mm-hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean exactly. they were kicked out of the league or whatever. And I love yep. Dana White. And I love Scott. You know, I respect. They're both very savvy businessmen. However, um, Pitbull, absolutely. He is a yeah. very skilled, talented fighter. Um, and again, I don't know enough about Chandler. I should. <laughs> No, and that's I can I can take that one. I'm like like I agree with you a thousand percent on Pitbull. Like I've talked to him, very cool guy. And yeah, I think he's like that at that perfect point where he can give a Volkanovski trouble because he's got tons of experience. He's still relatively in that prime. Chandler, I feel like Chandler, like he should have went to the UFC like two three years ago. Like I feel like he's when you get to a certain point in age at the lower weights, it's always dicey. You never know like when when Father Time's gonna come in and say hello, I'm here and I'm here to stay. You know, so that's always dicey. But let me ask you about this in terms of, and I tweeted about, you know, that exact comedy he talked about where he made the reference, like, oh, him saying that, isn't that cute of Scott and stuff like that. And, you know, people frustrated they won't have these cross-promotional. And I feel like in in the world we live in now, it's so brand-centric. Everything's about brands yeah. now and everything yes. like that. And it's all about when you're in a power position, protecting that brand. You're not going to give up that brand unless somebody get a piece no. of that brand. Like, like That's tell right. me, because I know you have to brand yourself, and you, you've made yourself a brand and everything like that. Like, how important is that branding and, and not wanting to maybe, not taint it, but share it too much in terms of, and dilute it on some level? Have you had to deal with stuff like that? Well, let's be honest. I don't know, Jason, that you could taint my brand. I mean, <laughs> and, and let's be real. And I'm not self-deprecating. I yeah, am I not. It, yeah. Or trying to, you know, I know who I am. However, yeah. people do not, people judge me based on the career or, yes, the career that I've chosen. So um, in the world's mind, I'm tainted. So it's mm. my job. I don't have to prove them wrong. But it would behoove me not to, you know, because yeah. if um, I don't look to, I guess, different avenues of, you know, sports, podcasting, you know, so I have to brand myself differently, you yeah. know, uh, a little bit different. So, uh, God, I'm not even answering your damn question. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but branding is important, you know, uh, y- you want to give that I've given quite a bit but there are parts of me that people still want to know and understand and so now is the time to start getting a little bit more personal yeah now i'll take two quick ones we got some comments in the chat we in the chat we have from uh frank mcegger i I knew a question like this coming this is probably the Mm -hmm. better of the questions but he asks very in a great pun are there any fighters that you lust for but let's say is there anything you lust for or any particular fighters you think are exceptionally handsome I mean, there's a lot of fighters that are uh, that are handsome. I thought that uh, Nemkov was a cute Russian fella mm. that came along. Yeah, he definitely um, took the spotlight. I mean, there's a lot of good-looking guys in there, but I don't really lust. I don't want to say I don't <laughs> lust for anyone, but... You know, I try not. I try to keep it professional um, <laughs> and keep keep some of those things, you know, yeah. because. Yeah, you don't know who's sliding and who's DMs. And <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Now, this next question comes from For Theo. They ask, which fighter would, which fight would you rather yeah. see, Frankie Edgar versus TJ Dillashaw or Frankie Edgar versus Dominic Cruz? Now, I have been pining uh-huh. for Edgar versus Cruz because they're just legends and they're kind of at that later stage, but yes. they're still pretty good. Like yes. that's the fight I need to see. But this is a great question because TJ's coming back. Who wouldn't want to see TJ and Frankie? That's an amazing fight too. And I'm not up to su- subscribing mm-hmm. to like, oh yeah, TJ was doing stuff all the entire time. I feel like he he did his cheating to make weight at one flyweight. That's my opinion. But for me, it's still Cruz and the TJ idea is a great number two. What, what about those two as a fan? Which one would you rather see first? In all honesty, it would really be cool to see um, Cruz and Edgar because – I just feel like, okay, Edgar's 38. You know, a lot of people were saying, like, okay, he's had mm-hmm. his time. You know, he cut weight. Like, I, I think that would just be awesome. I have to yes. agree. But, I mean, none of those fights, if you pair yeah. any those three up in any way, it's, it's not going to be bad. So, but I agree with you. Now, uh, this one, another interesting name. Satan's Daddy asks, wow. what other adult film stars are into MMA that Kendra knows of. Are there any? Are, is is wow. does adult films have a big MMA fan base or not really? 
You know, I mean, I think that there are a lot of, there's a lot of crossing over of fans, you know, wrestling, MMA, adults, sports and sex kind of go together. But mm -hmm. as far as women that watch it, I know, um, I don't know a ton of the females. I know there's a male um, uh, actor who does, and he hit me up, Manuel. He's like, hey, you know, I'm a big MMA fan, Kendra. I would love to be on your podcast. He's he's a veteran legend in our industry. Mm. So, um, yeah, so, I mean, there are, but... I'm, I'm in Michigan, they're in Cali, so it's like a lot of them. <laughs> yeah. We're all over the place, yeah. but I, I'm sure there are, but I, I don't know. I don't want to say there aren't any as big as me. I'd like to think that they're not into it as much as me. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. Now, <laughs> Stoic, is, I think that's the way you say Stoic asks, what do you think about Paige Van Zandt? signing with bare knuckle fc what are you what are your thoughts on that like that was a, a bit of a surprise everybody just figured oh she's gonna go to bellator be with the husband austin vanderford maybe yeah. one championship but no bkfc jumps in and steals one of the really truly good strong brands in mma in terms of fighters and brands she's as known as it gets and despite maybe not having a stellar record what were you stunned by that what do you think her chances are going to bkfc i was not uh, surprised at all you oh, know if they're right. going to pay her and and you know maybe yes. she, she that's the thing it's a yes. business granted yep. this is a pa her passion um you know what she does however at the end of the day it's still a business yep. okay so she's she went there they're gonna pay her and they're gonna pay her well so um it would have been cool maybe for her to go to Bellator, but she's mm -hmm. a businesswoman at the end of the day, and she went where they paid her. So I respect that 100%. Not surprised at all. She's a smart girl. And and what, what are your thoughts also, too? Because I agree a, a bunch in terms of, like, and people hating on her. Oh, you should have went to Bellator. You got to go where the money is. This is, this, you know, being a fan and giving fans the, fa the fights they want does not pay for the bills with the husband or the possible nope. kids you have coming on the way. And also, like, you know, as a person taking ownership in a career and expanding a brand, she's going to get a ton of opportunities to kind of be a front person for a brand in bare knuckle fighting and this particular organization as I guess a front person as they grow and and take a, you know ownership of that how important is that I don't know if you've ever done anything like that in terms of like having ownership in an organization in adult films or something else that yes that's a big deal yeah it is a big deal it's a lot of pressure too because I've yeah. been there in, the, in a different aspect you know directing and producing and owning mm. a talent agency so there, you know, that you're the face. I was yep. the face of the agency, you know, so it's a huge reflection. However, I think, you know, she's she's been under pressure before. She's been in the limelight um, and she's proven that she can uh, with withstand the pressures. So I think she's going to do great. I think she's going to be a perfect face for Bare Knuckle and uh, kudos to her. I'll be looking forward to, to seeing what she's, she's going to do. The one, the last point I would make on that is the only issue I really have is like when we've watched Paige, great, really good grappler, similar to her husband, her, but she's only got like a couple knockouts. One was a head kick. Like we don't know Paige for boxing. So that's the weirdest thing. Like her going into box, like that concerns me a little bit. Like, I'm not sure how well she'll do at first. Like, do you think she's good? Like they, they already have already said, like they're going to slowly build her up until yes. they're not going to throw it in deep end. Like, what do you think? Like that, that's got to be the safe thing. She can't go in against top boxers yet <laughs> no no absolutely not so i i'm sure they're they're not going to set her up for failure so they're probably going to strategically plan how uh, her fights are going to go but for right now you know she's going she should be you know relishing in like this is exciting she's relishing in the limelight i guess at this point and then you know when it's time to to get down to business and she's going to take a fight i think she's going to be more than prepared for it yeah. um she's going to have to adjust her training a little bit and then that's fine you know she's still young she's growing she's learning she's gonna do great now I have another question from the chat. And I think this is a, I have no influence, no power on social media. You have huge influence. So this oh. I think is a very relevant in that. Curry Ninja MMA, he says, yo, how's it going? Do mm -hmm. you respond to comments? On my social media? I, uh, I mean, that's where yeah. they, they left it. So I'm guessing, yeah, social media, yeah. like are you a person that gets involved with the fan experience and tries to comment to people, answer people there? 
I do. I do a section, especially for the podcast, where I will try to take fan questions and try to respond. Obviously, if they're completely outrageous, disrespectful, or vulgar, I'm not going to. Um, but, you know, if, there are, if, if someone can make me laugh in their question and there's a question <laughs> behind it that's actually yeah. pretty good, then absolutely. So I do try to. Um, obviously, I, we can't answer everybody. You know, you know this. Just yeah, people. Of know who have a, a good following it is hard so you just do your best and uh, but i love fan engagement and here's another good question from the from the chat especially since you just mentioned i didn't know you 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 led an agency i think this is really important too what other uh, marion cravens asks what other avenues of promotion do you think that mma fighters should look at as far as earning more money and i think like the iridium uh, sports that's an agency they get a lot of ads for their fighters like a lot of their fighters do manscape they have like instagram yeah. videos the manscape i think that's great smart stuff like as a person that you at it as age you kind of have to look for the other money sources like what that's would right. you uh, suggest in terms of uh, you know yeah you're not managing ma fighters but what would where should the ma fighters look to to get that extra money well i think a lot of them well with ufc they're limited with the reebok right so they can't yeah, really true, true. you know yeah. they're they're yep. kind of and if you can't get it on tv there it's like it's not as valuable but i mean they're with espn so it's like yeah. I, I from what i've heard uh bellator pays a little better ufc yeah. gives you more the opportunity so it's like it's like a i don't know I, there's benefits to both and they're both great organizations However, um, you know, with um, Bellator, I know they do they do stuff with Monster. There's things mm -hmm. for CBD, um, which is which is huge. Um, I don't know. Obviously, any type of sports, you know, uh, Nike, Under Armour, all those types of things. I think uh, anything that's relevant to the sport uh, would be important. They did one for a what commercial was it? I think it was Anthony Reyes. And, uh, oh, I can't remember what commercial oh, it was. Oh, the Toyo the, Tires? Yeah, the girl painting yeah, yeah. in the ash. Yes, and he's like, yeah, yeah. Yes, you know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, really, in a way, they can do anything, you know? But I, I feel like if you're going to expand your brand or if you're going to represent a company, it has to be something that you, you somewhat believe in with, you know, mm. conviction. You don't want to take something that you can't really, okay. Yeah. <laughs> So. And I've to, and I've talked to managers, and it, it, from what I've got over the the last bunch of years, especially because of the Reebok deal, and mm -hmm. even before the Reebok deal, like the UFC was forcing uh, sponsors to pay a certain amount of money just to get their products on the fighters to start with. That the like the sponsorship side of things has really dried up in a lot of ways for fighters. Mm -hmm. So would you say, as a person that has millions of followers, is it if if a fighter isn't pushing their social media and getting on their social media, are they doing it wrong? Do you really have to build your social media? Because I see so many fighters just selling products on their Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. At the end of the day, you cannot depend on a company to make you, okay? Yeah. You know, you have to be able to talk. That's the mm -hmm. thing. You know, what made, aside from Conor McGregor being one of the greatest fighters of all time, what mm -hmm. made him marketable? It was his personality, you know, the way he spoke, he engaged, like he, he's just entertaining all around. So yeah. you have to brand yourself, kind of look at your your demographic your personality and kind of brand yourself accordingly you can't expect a company to make you you know you you have to be good at your craft but you also mm -hmm. have to to reach out and i mean if, especially the bellator fighters you have to knock down doors they're not going to come to you all the time you know you, you have to put in the work nobody's going to work harder for you than you now this next question is straight for you because you're a budding superstar in this podcast mm -hmm. game now. Zebra Cheeks, they ask. Ooh, I like that name. <laughs> and it's a frequent person that asks a question on here. So great job, Zebra Cheeks. Does Kendra think Joe Rogan's move to Spotify with his Joe Rogan experience may potentially open doors for MMA podcasters or podcasters like yourself who are currently still using YouTube. But you think like like him leaving and maybe other people going to Spotify, Spotify, you know, it's making YouTube an even better source because less competition maybe. Yeah, apps, I mean, that was a great, I don't know how many hundred million dollar yeah. move, okay? <laughs> yes. had, what was it, how many hundred, was it 700? So, I don't know what I it was. Yeah, I know it's big, yeah. Huge move, okay? I don't know what it was, but seven mil, I don't know. Okay, <laughs> don't quote me on this, but it was a huge payday for Joe. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I feel like Joe is in a league of his own. So, yeah. I mean, you, yeah. in a way you can't really, it's like apples and oranges. Yeah. So, um, I didn't really answer your question, but I don't know. Joe's awesome. 
I love him. <laughs> He's hilarious. His stand-up's great. I went yeah. and saw him in Detroit. And I'm just telling you, you got to watch his stand-up. The guy is just, <laughs> he's talented on so many levels. And great, great entertainer, so. Ne- the next question... Him. The next question comes from Satan's Daddy. They come with another second question. They ask, so what will Bellator do with Ryan Bader? Book a rematch against Vadim Nemkov or let him defend heavyweight belt? I feel he's got to go defend the heavyweight belt. And honestly, to me, heavyweight really may be where he stays going forward because he could still be nasty there where I felt, at least in this fight with Vadim, he was a little slower. You know, 37, you know, the young guy, 27, the The, speed difference was, like, what do you think? Like, he he, he tries to get a rematch with the heavyweight. What do you think his future is in light heavyweight in general? Well, you know, I think, I think personally that he might do better in heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Um, Would I like to see, or would you like to see a rematch? Absolutely. Um, it was a great fight. I enjoyed it. But I mean, at the end of the day, he still holds the heavyweight title. I mean, he held two belts. He has yeah. one. He only has one now. However, I think maybe he'll do a little bit better in heavyweight. I, I don't know. We'll see. But um, rematch would be cool. I definitely put some bets in on that. Now, talking about another fight on that card, uh, Kung La- Kung Lawens, I think that's how, sorry, Kung, if I'm saying it, Kung Lawens, they ask, did Roy Nelson even train for his fight against Valentin Moldovsky? Now, now, let's be real here. Roy is getting long in the tooth, so to speak. So the, no. If you're going to be the heaviest you've maybe ever been in your career and the oldest you've ever been in your career, probably a bad idea. What, thoughts, Kendra? What do you think about that? I, oh, I think Roy's, what, 44? Yeah. yeah. he's a big dude, but he, yeah. I mean, such a chin. Hey, and he went the duration. I don't know if the mm-hmm. guy, has the guy ever been knocked out? I mean, no. the, I was going to say, the guy is a beast. Um, I don't know. Maybe he just loves to fight. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not ready to hang up my <laughs> song. Maybe he's not ready to hang up his gloves. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I didn't even, don't know if I answered the question, um, but you know, it takes one punch, <laughs> you know, just yeah. one punch yep. and it's over. So, I love yeah. him though. He's awesome. Yeah, Bellator is in, a, in an interesting spot because I think now I was looking at it at, that night. I think he's like one in five now in Bellator, and his first win was his first fight. You know, he's 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 got a lot of mile on, on him. Like it's and he's I'm sure he's a very expensive contract. That they're in a tough spot. I know they said uh, people in the arena said that he went up to Scott Coker after the fight and said, "Let me get one more fight," and I wanted he wanted the Matt Mitrione trilogy. That would make sense. They both have won once in their career against each other. The last fight was very close. They could could have maybe even been a split. So, like, who, 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 I don't know if you've seen either of their fights, Roy and Matt Mitrione's fights. They fought in the Grand Prix, but would would that fight at least interest you despite kind of, like, Roy being on a big losing skid right now? It would interest me because I like Roy. I met Roy in Vegas, yeah. and he's a big sweetheart. So it's <laughs> like when I meet someone, I don't know. Like, I don't care if he's considered, you know, an underdog. I, mm-hmm. I'm just a super nice guy. I, 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 I don't care. I don't know. I, I would like to see him fight. I just want knockout for the big boy. Yeah, I would. Now, one last question. I think this one's kind of maybe jumping the gun a little bit, but the spider asks, is Vadim Nemkov the best light heavyweight in the world with John Jones gone? I, I know my answer. What, what do you think? I already see you have your answer. Not yet. Not yet, yeah. young man. No, yeah. he's still a young grasshopper. Got a little bit of growing to do. Very tough, though. He looked great. He looked sharp. Chris, yeah. I mean, good. A lot of potential, but it's a little too early, I think, to, to say that. You know, yeah. that would be and giving, he, discrediting John Jones. Come on now. Yeah, and, and even with John now out of the picture going to heavyweight, like, Vadim, and I've watched his all his fights at Bellator. He gets better, and he's got good wins. He's beaten uh, three straight or four, four straight Bellator champions now in all his fights. He's, his resume is getting better, but... It's hard to pick against Dominic Reyes, a guy who was on the brink of beating the best. And it's yes. hard it's hard to pick against uh, Tiago Santos, another guy that was close. Uh, Jan Blakovic is, has been on fire, and just the resume is a little bit better. But for, the guy's only, Vadim's only 27. Like, yeah. just keep an eye on him and enjoy him. Let's not call him the best yet. Let's enjoy his rise to being, like, one of the great young talents in this sport. 
Absolutely. And I misspoke earlier. I said Anthony, and I, I, was, I was looking at Dominic's face, so <laughs> I'm sorry on that. I apologize. My apologies, Dominic. Dominic is also one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Uh, mm. Just hung out with him a couple times in Vegas. Big guy. He just sweetest guy. Anyway, now I forgot the <laughs> damn question. Um, but no, no, your point being that give him time. He'll, yeah. he'll develop and still kind of early to say, so. All right, so that's pretty much all the questions before we go. Is there is there anything you want to let the people out there that watch this now or watch this later? Like, are, are there any projects you're working on you want to get out there and promote a little yeah. bit? Let them know the socials. Not not that you need more social followers. You have millions already. But, like, anything you want to let the people know. Hey, I'm just grateful. Um, you know, I guess be patient. My my MMA um, knowledge is, is, is coming slowly, but surely. And, um, you know, I'm still new, but I enjoy it. And I, you know, have a huge respect for the, the sport, the fans. Um, obviously, our my podcast, the Beauty and the Beast podcast with Julia Marquez, um, will be uh, slowly, slowly getting better and better. And, um, you know, looking forward to, you know, gaining a fan and, you know, just grateful for everybody's support thus far. All right, for me, uh, you can always find me on Twitter, Instagram, Cheap Seas Chat, uh, SureDog.com. I'll have a few articles coming out this week, awesome. you know, for events coming up. Also wanted to throw out, you know, this for my homie for, let me see, let me make sure it's on the camera. My, my friend Paul Gavoni, his new book is like just sent it to me. He's he's a, a great mind work with American Top Team. Look for it on Amazon. Find it out there. Great training. He It's a book on training. He gives like a ranking level for fighters and all this stuff. I'm going to start reading it soon. But Kendra Luss. Thank you so oh, much yes. for the time. It was an absolute pleasure. Love the conversation. Oh, yes. it, 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 thank just you. thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. You are a wonderful host, and I am so grateful for you having me. So I hope you have a great rest of your, what's today, Monday, week. <laughs>